This video is going to look at the concepts around aggregate supply for level 3 NCA. Um, I've specified level 3 NCA because some of the concepts around the shape of aggregate supply are different to say level 2 and again probably different from university. So here we go. So in NCA level 3 economics we have our aggregate supply curve which has a very particular shape as you can see. Um, starting off initially quite flat at low levels of real GDP and then becoming increasingly steep. That shape's important because it has implications for inflation and how that changes depending on how um, active our economy is and how close to full employment the economy is operating. As you can see on the graph we have YF which is the full employment level of the economy. That's when all resources, not just workers, but um, capital resources and natural resources as well, are being fully employed. That's important um, because, again, it affects the shape of the aggregate supply curve. And in fact, the YF um, line is also known as the long run aggregate supply curve. So looking more closely at this, you'll see if you consider um, real GDP at Y1, that would be not a very good economy, to be honest. Um, it would be way below full employment. A lot of resources would be unemployed, not just workers, but you'd have factories sitting idle, um, machines not being used, and so on. So what the aggregate supply curve is showing is that, say we increase production to Y2, um, we could do that without any real impact on prices. And the reason for that is we can use the existing workers. They can just work a little bit harder than they have been. We can use the existing machinery and tools um, that have been maybe sitting idle or only working at 50% of their capacity. So costs aren't going to change much. And so real output, real GDP can increase without any substantial change in prices. If we increase production further to Y3 or even to YF, then costs start to change. Costs start to get a bit tighter. There's more competition for um, more competition for resources, and other things can happen as well. All of which push costs up, and so p force firms to put prices up. So, what we've got then is things like firms competing for resources, particularly workers. So maybe they're offering um, new workers higher wages. We do assume that wages are held constant for the shape of the supply curve, but they maybe have to um, get their workers to work overtime, um, which would obviously increase their costs. They may have to pay more for their material costs. Um, at the same time, things like bottlenecks occur, which is where maybe they suddenly, as they're really pushing their production, they find that one particular area of their production slows everything else down. It's called a bottleneck. Um, diminishing returns might occur. So where in the short run, um, some resources are fixed, those fixed resources slow down production. And when that happens, costs start rising. So firms, when we get close to YF, firms across the country are only going to be prepared to try and increase their production if they can get, if they can push prices up at the same time to cover those rising costs. In effect, what that means is increases in real GDP increasingly come at the cost of inflation and prices going up. And you can see that from the shape of the curve. Now that's really important for when you're considering government policies. There's no point trying to boost demand in the economy when we're operating near full employment because mostly what we get is inflation instead of increasing real GDP. So what factors are going to shift the aggregate supply curve? It comes back to costs, costs, costs. If costs change, that will affect aggregate supply. It is quite similar to the um, regular market supply curves in this respect, although with some differences. So what's going to affect that? Things like the cost of imported materials. Oil is particularly important because it affects the price of um, petrol and diesel and everything else that affects transport throughout the country. So cost of imported materials. Be clear, this is materials that are used throughout the country. Um, the cost of one item that is if used in one market is unlikely to have a big impact, but things like oil that affect the whole country, um, as well as that, I don't think I've got it on here, but things like costs like electricity um, will also have a nationwide effect on costs. Those will all decrease aggregate supply if they go up. Wage rates, of course, the cost of labor, if that's increasing, that's going to decrease aggregate supply. If wage rates are held constant or falling, then that will increase aggregate supply. The exchange rate. 
not going to go into a lot of detail about this, but the exchange rate directly affects the cost of imported materials. When the exchange rate appreciates and goes up, it makes um, our imports cheaper, and therefore imported materials get cheaper. If our exchange rate's falling, the opposite applies. Productivity is really critical to aggregate supply. If we can improve our productivity, and again, this is nationwide productivity, be clear about that, then that means that on average, firms can produce each product more cheaply, and that would increase aggregate supply. So often the government might do things to try and boost productivity around the country, um, and obviously a better educated um, population would also help with that. Government regulations can affect businesses' costs, Mr. Brackett there. Um, so government regulations like how much paperwork a firm has to do, um, how much health and safety they have to comply with, and um, how much tax they have to pay, a whole pile of things affect, can affect costs for businesses. And if you pay attention to the news, you'll know that there's quite a lot of um, discussion often around um, the Resource Management Act in New Zealand. Um, which does have quite a lot of regulation involved and adds to businesses' costs. On the other hand, it does help to protect their environment. Um, but so all that paperwork has an impact on costs. If we can cut those regulations, then you would expect aggregate supply to increase. And finally, supply-side government policies. They're called supply-side government policies because they affect aggregate supply. Um, if the government can do things like that will improve productivity, that will reduce regulations, then those are supply-side government policies because they will help to increase aggregate supply. So just for ex as an example, an increase in aggregate supply would look like this. Um, notice that why if increases, you can't really have an increase in aggregate supply without an increase in, in, in full employment as well, otherwise you just end up way beyond it. NCA Level 3, they don't really seem to deal with that. They kind of just ignore that. But certainly um, for um, scholarship, you would probably consider that full employment level would need to increase. For example, if productivity across the country increased, then the total production possible by our economy would increase, and that's what YF shows. So simply shift your curve to the right. Make sure you've got that arrow in there to show the change. AS dash or AS1 to show the new aggregate supply curve. So that's it from me. Just remember, the main thing affecting aggregate supply is cost. Pretty much everything else is something that affects those costs. Thank you.